Mark Wall. Thank you very much, Chair. Minister, thank you very much for coming in this morning. It's much appreciated to, to our committee. Um, I listened in, Minister, from, from the office to your opening statement, uh, and one of the issues that you mentioned was that your department had looked at the, the model in Malta. Uh, and maybe you might just, just give us an insight onto what, where that consultation is at the moment. It's, it's, a, it's a model that's held up by many in relation to European uh, norms and where we should be going as a country. So just, just to maybe to develop that point a bit, to what has been the contact with Malta and where you see that going. Um, I, I would appreciate that. Um, I, unfortunately, I missed last week, um, Minister, but uh, and, and, and Minister Madigan in. But the July programme you mentioned as well is, is essential to families, and the change of routine is brought up with us on so many uh, occasions when we meet with families. Um, one of the issues that, that I experience in Kildare is, is that schools are not in a position to put it on for, for a variety of reasons. But what one of the, 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 the mentions that, that, that have been said to me by a number of families and indeed schools, and I know the chair, you've mentioned this as well. Is is to try and organise regional centres for, for summer July programmes. So in big towns that we would actually have where there's three, four, maybe even five schools, that we actually have a centre where there is actually somewhere where that routine can be maintained for families. And I think it's something that the department needs to look at and look at urgently, obviously uh, not for this year, but as we, as we proceed forward. And I'd like you and welcome your comment and hopefully support on it, that a town like Newbridge, which has four schools in it, would actually have a centre that people could actually bring their loved ones into and it's so important, as I said, in relation to routine for them. You mentioned in relation to Deputy Collins the, the cost and, uh, of assessment. I get this on, a, on, a, on an almost weekly basis, sometimes a daily basis. Parents are, are paying up to a €1,000 privately to actually, to actually go assess uh, an assessment of need. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a lot of help there, Minister, to actually pay for those costs. Community welfare officer is not a solution, although I've tried it a couple of times. Are, are you looking at something like that to assist those people who can't afford a private assessment of need to see if, they, if government can help them? I appreciate that you have to have the services after the assessment of need, but first of all, the assessment of need is demanded, and is there going to be help from government with that cost of up to a thousand euros? And finally, then, uh, Chair, and thank you. Um, obviously, the, my party, Labour Party, introduced the Autism Bill of 2022, and maybe I just maybe get a comment from yourself of the, the, your your support of that. I would hope, Minister, and government support on where that bill should go from here. Thanks, Chair. Um, thank you very much, Senator. Um, you, you've brought up a number of issues there. So, first and foremost, in relation to um, supporting families um, needing to assess. Uh, get assessment of needs completed and they feel that there's no option because they're left waiting for so long. Absolutely, that's why I talk about the outsourcing um, because the, it varies on the need as well on the assessment. In some cases, it could be a thousand, it could be two and a half thousand, depending on the clinical need of intervention. And families sometimes don't realise that at the start of it, they might be told they'll get X, but you need to get that fully comprehensive piece. So my piece here is in relation to the procurement. We're looking at all the procurement rules and I'm having those conversations around it. That's why I talk about the 25,000. That won't get a lot done in any CHO. We need to go to the European standard of it, 250,000, and we need to make it very available so as we can cater the need of, that we're not limited by. So I know that at this moment in time, we talk about the PTAs, that there's 10,000 PTAs that need to be given the option back to parents for that reassessment. That's a lot to get done at the same time meeting other needs. So yes is the answer to your answer in relation to funding for it. Absolutely. And that would mean then that all children are within the system and that all children could get the proper interventions. And then I would talk to Deputy O'Flaherty's point in relation to where the children are, how can we best deliver it, can be delivered in the schools, what is the mechanism can we do to do, to do that um, delivery piece in, in relation to it. Uh, yes, I do agree with you in relation to your idea around um, larger centres using, so I talk about my own school below in Portumna, the community school, and we have 11 national schools around the place. Yes, that would be a fantastic playing pitches and everything else. Why wouldn't we access it? But there needs to be that continuity at the same time. We need a link with the school somewhere along the way. So it's not like we need to have the teachers there for four weeks, but if we had them coming in, or the SNA coming in, that you'd have a, a friendly face that they would recognise to be able to deliver it. So, creating that pathway, but at the same time, maybe bringing our trainee therapists or bringing our trainee teachers onto the schools a few weeks earlier and building that link as well is, a, is another way of looking at it. And to be honest with you, there is really good success stories as well in the delivery of um, July provision. So only last week I visited PALS uh, and their um, nearly years centre and they're delivering full July provision. And there you see how the benefit to the child, to the family, 
and the wider community at large. So when you see a system work well, it, it, it can work really, really well, and we're missing that in a lot of communities at the moment in time. In relation to the Malta piece, I would have started on the Malta piece about two years ago when I just came into to office. Um, I had took two people over from Trinity College and they were looking for something to do for a summer and I gave them the work experience to go out and research where are the best on it. So they came back absolutely with the Malta piece and I'm still not in the Department of Equality but I've managed to nudge my way in there and get the funding from um, the team inside in Decidi and I'm going to pass to Niall because he was one that was doing the engagement last week so he'll bring you right up to date on where we're at. Thanks Minister. Um, we've had uh, ongoing um, conversations with uh, our counterparts in Malta and there's been a very good exchange of information going two ways. They have some areas in relation to CRPD where we're a little bit ahead of where they are um, and they have some areas where they're a little bit ahead of us. So there's been an opportunity to share learning. Autism is one of those um, and we've had discussions focusing on how, um, for example, Malta addressed the issue of how to identify and address bespoke needs whilst not also duplicating labour or, or creating that hierarchy in terms of disability supports um, and what the Maltese approach to that was and that's been quite useful. Um, we've also had some discussions around the content of their strategy, how they handled consultations, in particular how to access persons who might have complex needs or persons who might not be caught in the normal consultation process and we've had um, good progress in that in our own consultations and producing easy to read documents but we'll reflect on that for the final consultation process um, and that that's ongoing so we've, we've arranged future meetings and, and they have some questions for us uh, in other areas of CRPD compliance and um, they want to talk to us about assisted decision making for example so there's there's a good two-way flow of communication and that will continue. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Minister. Uh, next on the list Deputy Parker Sullivan. Thanks, Chair. Uh,